Yeah, Pennsylvania. Welcome everybody. My name is Mina Jane. I'm the director of the Ashland Public Library in Massachusetts. I'm really thrilled to be here with our um, host, Jeff DePauli of That Halloween Podcast, who's been doing this series all year long. And it's super fun, all about haunted experiences throughout mostly in New England, but sometimes just anywhere that's really interesting. And we're, he, we're here with Alexander DeColibus from Halloween New England, and they will be chatting all about what um, Alexander does to make sure that the word gets out about all of the amazing, oh, scary things that go on in New England. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get started, I just want to say thank you to the Friends of the Ashland Public Library for supporting all of our programs and to Jeff and Alexander who let us share this program with other libraries because, you know, without working together, we're, um, we're kind of on our own and um, it's much more fun to work with your friends, right? So Jeff, take it over and I will see you all in an hour. <laughs> Thanks, Mina. Sounds good. Well, welcome everybody. I see we got Salem, Massachusetts in the house, Westport, Connecticut, Bellingham, Massachusetts. We got Hampton, New Hampshire, West Newbury, people from all over, Swampskit. So thank you for joining everybody. If you've been joining throughout the year, um, you'll know that if you have questions for Alexandra during this session, feel free to leave a question in the Q&A tab, not the chat tab. At the end, about the last 10 minutes or so, we'll check the Q&A tab there and uh, answer some questions. So feel free to use that. And if you have been joining all year long, you know typically we kind of deep dive into a haunted attraction of some sort. Today's a little bit different. Today, we're actually looking at a resource, a Halloween resource for fans of Halloween events. And let's just start, Alexander. Hello and welcome. Thank you for being here. Jeff, I'm a huge fan of your series. I hope that everyone here has had a chance to sit in and, you know, check out your series every single month. I've been following the whole year long and I'm like so honored to be a part of it. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you. I'm glad you've been joining and you've asked some fantastic questions along the way. And I encourage everybody else to as well. <laughs> but since this is a little bit different, can you just let's start off by can you describe what Halloween New England is? I mean, at its at its basic, it is a website that has a resource is really a resource for all the Halloween events in the six New England states. So in case you're wondering if you're from outside New England, New York is not part of New England. Let's <laughs> just get that out of the way. <laughs> um, occasionally, even a New Englander will get that wrong. But um, it is 2,500 Halloween events throughout the year. Um, you know, the bulk of that being during the fall season and another 400 Halloween attractions. So we're talking everything from ghost tours to pumpkin festivals, haunted houses, haunted hay rides, um, costume contests, jack o' lantern, you know, festivals, you name it. It really runs the gamut. And as I'm sure we'll talk about today, there's a really wide spectrum of what, you know, what is considered a how, you know, something that is a Halloween event or a Halloween experience at this time of year. Absolutely. And one of the cool things about this webinar series, as well as your website, is most people are probably fans, right? They're looking for stuff to experience and enjoy, which is lovely and which your site can do. But it's also there for businesses and people who are, you know, throwing Halloween events. And I'd love to touch on that a little bit as well. What do you do for, so it's a resource for folks to go to and find out. And we'll get into the website in a little bit. But if it's a business uh, looking to help promote, how exactly do you work with businesses? I mean, it could be a business or it could be a local, you know, community event producer. There's a lot of local community events that are just trying to get the word out about their, you know, outdoor horror movie or uh, a costume festival that they're putting on a costume parade. Sometimes it's a fundraiser. It doesn't necessarily need to be a business, but I work with all kinds of people to try to help support their, their event or their attraction in the variety of ways that, you know, that. It, it presents itself. So um, it could be anything from listing them on the website to, um, you know, including pictures or getting the word out through our social media channels. I mean, we, I really look at myself as a neutral party in this. I'm really here to help champion the Halloween event producers and attractions that, you know, are which again could be anything from a, a local farm that puts on a, you know pumpkin patch to um, somebody who is really in it you know for profit to put on a, a particular kind of attraction. Um, again, it really runs the gamut, and I look at myself as just the person to help facilitate getting the word out, connecting people to fans, connecting people to 
even just a mom looking for some place to drop off her teenagers for the night. So it, 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 my, my hope is that the site provides opportunities for really everybody, whether they're kind of super fans or, um, or a business, you know, trying to get the word out and, and make sure that they connect to people. Fantastic. And let's just take a little peek at uh, what it is that Halloween New England does. Here's, a, here's just a kind of brief overview of some of the events in the New England area. Oh, the sliders. You got to love the sliders, right? I'm ready for Halloween. How about you? <laughs> I've been ready for a very long time. It's funny, actually, on, on I'm, I'm doing a shameless plug, even though I'm not intending to. But on that Halloween <laughs> podcast, one of the rapid fire questions I have this year at the end for each of my guests is, what is the perfect date to start celebrating the Halloween season? And several of my guests have said November 1st, getting ready for the next year. It's, yeah. it's like, you know what? It truly is. There a is start a date? <laughs> what was that? Is there a start date? Is there an end date? I'm not sure. It really I, I know. It's just, it's just always. Yeah. But um, let's talk about, I'd love to hear, how did this begin for you? How did Halloween New England become so much of your life? I mean, the simplest answer, like for anybody who starts a lot of ventures, you know, I think it's a really common story that you don't, you don't have your own needs met. <laughs> so you, you kind of decide to do it yourself. Um, you know, I'm a very organized person. And so it really just was so frustrating when I was trying to find particular Halloween events or haunted attractions or find information about schedules. And I just felt like, you know, well, one, you sort of only find who go, who rises to the top of Google. You know, you don't get to necessarily uh, get a full sense of everybody who's out there. So that was one thing that I was hoping to solve is put all the things kind of in one place, one bucket. Um, it also, the, the, the resources that were out there were primarily focused, I would say, on haunted attractions, but even those... And again, I'll just speak at that time that I created Halloween New England. I felt like um, they just weren't very organized for me. I felt like I couldn't find what I was looking for. You know, I would go to something that had, you know, specifically was focused on Connecticut, but it would have things from New Hampshire in there. <laughs> like It was just sort of all over the map. And I just found it, again, just for me, it just wasn't, it wasn't useful. It was a lot of flashing lights and blinking everything. It just was kind of stressful. Like I didn't want to be on those sites, digging and digging, digging harder than I had to. So, you know, real, real mission for me was to put everything in one place and to make sure it was easy to find and in, a, in categories that made sense to people. I wanted the site to be intuitive um, and the site that we have now is really what I call like website 2.0. It you know went through an overhaul about four years ago. So this is the you know the latest iteration of it, which is in a lot of ways a dream. It really pulled together all the things I was trying to do with the old site and kind of pulled it in with a new interface, a new layout, new kind of tone and quality to it. And um, it just has everything that I could hope for. And essentially, you know, the way it's built is there's basically, it's kind of powered by two databases. There's the, the event database, which has the, you know, 2000 plus Halloween events kind of loaded into the database. And then this other one, which is the attractions. And I really distinguish them as attractions are really um, standalone businesses. So for example, um, you know, one distinction is like a haunted attraction that is a for-profit business at an independent location would be considered an, an attraction and they're in the attraction database. They might be on the haunt guide for their particular state. 
And then if I had, if there's like a local yard haunt or a fundraiser haunt, that's sort of a one-off, right? It's not a business necessarily, but it is an important community event and they're doing great work. They might even been, been around for a few decades doing their community event. And that would be considered an event and that would show up on the calendar instead of the haunt guide. So, um, you know, a lot of the site just is about making those decisions about what falls into what category and then making sure it's presented in a way that, again, is intuitive for people to find and is just really useful with everything that they really need to know to kind of have the information and then get up and go. And it's research. Yeah, you hit I mean, at, the, at the heart of it, it's research. It's like even from day one that I started it, it's how do I research absolutely everything that's out there and really vetting it to make sure is it Again, is it a pro attraction? Is it a community attraction? Um, you know, what is the the admission price this year? What where are they located? Have has their location changed? What kind of an event is it? Like it is at its heart, you know, 12 months of research every single year and updating everything, confirming everything. So I try not to have old information on there. I make sure all those events have been updated. So it's, you know, if I have 2,500 Halloween events, I have personally through the year, like confirm that these are the dates for this year. This is the, the information for this year. This is the location. I make sure that if people are, you know, going to Halloween New England, that they're getting accurate information to kind of get up and go. Um, sometimes places don't even have websites to link to. So in some ways I might be their only way of getting the word out. Yeah, and I can vouch for everything you just said. I know that you put so much time and research into all of it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but people can submit themselves, correct? If they have an event? They, they can. Um, I would say probably 0.5% of what you see on the site has been submitted. Um, you know, even events, I, I do get event submissions every year, but it's, you know, a tiny, tiny fraction. Really, it's me seeking it out, confirming, you know, what's new, finding a new event, adding it into the database. It's just really, really labor intensive. And that is what I work on. I would just say I start confirming events in May and then I just plug away at it. My database is just like, it's really, really intense. And um, I just go one by one. And if something hasn't been confirmed yet, I go back again the next month and see if it's been confirmed. Not yet. I go back again the next month and I just plug away at it until I can update it on there and put it on there. And sometimes people submit their things and I think, oh, I already have that on there. I already got to it first. You know, <laughs> I try. But still, I think that's I think that's important for people to hear. I think that if anybody watching is involved with the haunt in any way, I mean, you should if it's in New England, you should be in the database. So submit it. It should be much more than 0.5% or whatever you said, you know, it yeah. should be, everybody should be submitting to Halloween New England. You'll make Alexandra's life a little easier, but also you want to make sure that your event is on the website. So I think that that's great. I think, like you said, a lot of people do think haunted houses when they think Halloween season. There is so much more to offer, but let's just take a quick peek at some of the the haunted houses that uh, that are around. Whoops, that's the same one. It's the most wonderful time of the year. The video makes me so happy. <laughs> I, I, mean, love I love haunted attractions so much. And I just look at those places. And those are places that are so dear to my heart. The haunted attractions of New England. Just, I mean, you can see I'm glowing. <laughs> it just, honestly, it makes me so happy. I love, 
I love going to them. I love supporting them. I, those are just the hardest working people in the industry. And I, there's just so much heart that they pour into those events. And I just, you know, reliving that even on the video makes, makes me smile. Me as well. Well, let's, let's go to your website. If you don't mind, why don't you share your screen and right. let's visit HalloweenNewEngland.com and show folks how they can find uh, all of these different events and haunts that are going around and yeah, basically show them how easy it is to use the website. I mean, right at the top, you can see it. Those are the six New England states, yeah. <laughs> Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Maine, Vermont. So everything so, is yeah. split up. You can, you know, go this way, right? You can go by the drop down menus. And of course, we're on the desktop site. The, the mobile site looks a little bit different. The mobile site works a little bit more like this particular drop down menu. Um, but, you know, you can also just click on a particular location. Haunted houses, go to Massachusetts, and you can see we've got all the pro haunted attractions in Massachusetts here. And if you click on, you know, something here, you've got some pictures, you have descriptions, you'll have their, um, you'll have their calendar, any special events. I mean, Barrett's happens to have a ton of special events here, links to more information about it, um, where you can buy tickets. So, you know, there's a variety of ways if you love, so for example, if you love ghost tours, you can, you know, check those out. One thing I really love are um, horror movie screenings. There's a ton of horror movie screenings. And these are not the ones like first run horror movie screenings. These are things like The Omen, film screening in a church, <laughs> which I will be at, by the way. <laughs> so, um, you know, it could be anything from various Rocky Horror. It could be indoors, outdoors, drive-in movies. Um, you know, one thing that I always love seeing, I think it's in Massachusetts, which is there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of uh, like silent films like Nosferatu with live musical accompaniment is one thing that I've really kind of seen an increase at. There's a few different states that you'll see people who play like uh, they'll have an organ, you know, the, an organist who's playing the organ during a movie or a quartet that has composed something to go along with a silent film. Um, you know, even unusual things like this that I'm going to be headed to the Edward Scissorhands. Um, is reimagined into a ballet and it's going to be screened at a local movie theater and you know four different theaters across New England. Um, I saw that many years ago in LA live on stage at the yeah. Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Yeah I cannot wait to see it. Can I wait to see it and even things like this we've got some you know horror cons coming up some uh, horror festival this weekend so we'll we'll be there too. So this, these are the kinds of things that I just absolutely love. You know you've got um, again, family friendly Halloween events. So you can go to different, um, you know, different types of guides that'll sort of break it down. Um, one of the things here that you can do is if you go to, uh, since we're talking about haunted attractions, if you click on the haunt guides, if you want to know who's already open for the season, or if you want to get somewhere early, you can head over to here to the haunt guides. If you want to go to an event like a no scare event, some haunted houses will have, um, events that are uh, strictly no scare. So they won't have actors in them, no no jump scares, nothing like that. But they usually have sound and fog and the lights are on and you can just kind of experience it. And those can be a little bit hard to find. So I compile them into a guide by state so you can see exactly you know where things are, are um, happening there. And another thing too is even just from the homepage, if you click on you know, any one of these icons, it's another nice way just to check check things out. So if I go to all events, let's go to Connecticut here, you can see just a variety of Halloween events that are coming up. We'll always have some top picks or certain things highlighted. And again, you know, you can, you can even search by the dates if you know that you're coming in from out of state or from another, you know, uh, you know, another Part, you know, another part of the world even sometimes will, you know, check this out and they can really zero in on what's going to be in their area. Um, a, a cool thing too is if you click on the name of a state, you can find um, dots for all of the events that are, I mean, excuse me, all of the attractions that are in this area. So the purple ones might be a featured event, but all of these little gray dots are different Halloween attractions. And then you'll see a list of like upcoming one, you know, upcoming featured Halloween events in New Hampshire. But you can scroll between states. You can 
click on something here, you know, and see what it is. It's really nice if you're going on a road trip or you're going to be, let's say, at a wedding somewhere and you want to see what's going to be happening this weekend. It's a great way to kind of see what's in your area. So um, so these are, you know, some of the ways that we've compiled all that information that is in the in those databases and tried to make it as user friendly as possible, because, you know, some people are looking for ideas. Some people are looking for road trips. Some people, you know, are going to going to a place like, you know, let's say they're a haunt a haunted house fan. They're going to, you know, let's say they live in Connecticut, they're a haunted house fan and they think I want to go to every haunted house this season. <laughs> in in the state of Massachusetts. And so they're going to have a list of every place that they can go, um, directions to all of that. And then that, you know, just makes their planning easier. So that's kind of the, the gist of the website. It's really fun to kind of poke around, pumpkin patches, you know, ghost tours, you name it, all the good stuff, you know, that, that people love. And I think people will be surprised by the variety of events that are offered. There's just you know, it's really not just trick or treating or scary things. There's just so much out there that really falls under the the you know the Halloween or horror or scary guide. You know, there's just a, a lot a lot going on. Absolutely, and I just on this page right. I, ooh, I was oh, going to say go sorry. back to that. Share that again for a second because you know you you hit on something important, and I I always say it. I say it's it's my favorite holiday because there's there's something for everyone. And right there under pick your poison. Haunted houses, haunted hay rides, horn mazes, haunt guides, ghost tours, horror movies, pumpkin patches, costume stores, family events, Halloween near me. Like, it's a nice selection of things. To, there is no, everybody can celebrate Halloween is my point. There is something for everyone. And um, and your site just really delivers that so, so nicely. So yeah, I mean, if, if you're fantastic. that mom looking for somewhere to drop off your teenager and you don't know, maybe you don't care about Halloween, <laughs> right? You are just literally looking to find something in your area. You punch in your, you go to Halloween near me, you punch in your zip code, it's going to show you what events are coming up near you and then what attractions are in your region. So, you know, you don't even have to have a, a, a pre preconceived idea of what you're looking for. It's great for browsing. But if you are a super fan of a particular type of event, if you love ghost tours and you want to check them all out, you know, there's a way to just zero in on the ghost tours in Rhode Island or the ghost tours in New Hampshire and, um, you know, really, really, you know, make the most of it. And is there a way to check by date? Like, say I'm driving through New Hampshire on a very, you know, I have one day, I'm there. Is yeah. there a way to, to do that? So if you're in New Hampshire, you would just punch in that date here and then click go on the cauldron and it's going to narrow it down to the date range that you are. That's fantastic. So if you're driving through on a Wednesday, right? Like, you know, most of them are weekend events, but I'm sure there are a handful that are open. So once again, a fantastic resource for that. I, I love what you said about if you're going to a wedding, find a haunt. <laughs> you reminded me. Oh, yeah. My sister got married in, I think it was Neshoba Valley, which is right near Witch's Woods. Yeah. Have you ever gone to Witch's Woods? I sure have. Yep. It, yeah. I, I actually worked there as a character when I was like in, I don't know, high school or something. I didn't know that about you. And, yeah. I worked a year there. And I just remember after my sister's wedding, which was like down the street from there, I'm like, I'm going to go to Witch's Woods. And I think I went in a full on suit and everything to Witch's Woods. Yeah. I right mean, on. look, <laughs> you can you have a choice. You can either get rid of the people in your life who have weddings in the fall, which is certainly, you know, on the table for some people who are super fans. Because if you're somebody like me, you know, you, your family and your friends, they know don't even ask. Don't ask Alexandra if she's available to go do this in October. Don't ask her in September. She's out of state traveling for Halloween events. You know, and my team much the same way. I think there's, um, um, you know, one of our team members, Lisa, her her boyfriend put on his calendar something to the effect of like, don't even ask Lisa. She's gone <laughs> for all of these weekends for the month of October. And, you know, it, there is a negotiation because this is the thing that we're passionate about. The, the season is kind of fast and furious. We pack as much in as possible. And, you know, the goal is to just, you know, soak it all up. And it is, you do have to kind of like set everything else aside, um, you know, while we're running this, this sprint. Now, one thing I found very much so in Southern California, tell me if this is true in the New England area or not, but I'm seeing a lot more stuff popping up around the year. Mm, yeah. Is your website keeping up with that sort of stuff as well? 
Yes. So, I mean, I would say I'm not as aggressive about seeking those events out because it could be just a dead end road. Um, you know, at that time of year, you could you could do a lot of research in March, but how much is going to necessarily come across your radar? I would say that is more me gathering events through osmosis. Maybe somebody will tip me off to something happening in the off season. But Halloween New England, you know, probably had its biggest off season this year. And I really consider Halloween season from Labor Day until mid-November. That's really what I consider the, the kind of crush of the Halloween season. Um, but this has been, so the preseason is basically from, you know, January until, until the end of August. It's been our biggest, biggest year. I'd say the traffic to the site doubled um, this off season. It's been a huge year for off season events. Um, you can really just see that traffic to the site spike. Even in May, there's a lot, there were a lot of halfway to Halloween events this year. Um, it's not uncommon that you'll see um, maybe a ghost tour or haunted attraction doing uh, like a Valentine's Day themed, you know, scary event or, 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 um, you know, things around the holidays. There's a haunted attraction in Connecticut that will even do something around Easter, um, Friday the 13th now, wherever that falls during the calendar year tends to be, you know, something that people circle to kind of make a celebration out of it. And, you know, of course, this idea of summerween, you know, of, of Halloween events and spooky things going on throughout the summer is just, you know, it's just keeps continuing to grow. My 97-year-old grandmother even read in the local paper, because of course she gets the paper delivered still. And, you know, she just thought it, she just got such a kick out of the fact that there was something called Summerween. You know? And that people are thinking about summer events. I'm thinking, of course, like that's what I've been doing, you know, in May and June is trying to check out these events. And, you know, I'll just even say here, the Ashland Library in particular has been really wonderful at offering events that are related to haunts or horror year round. I mean, I've been to um, uh, horror makeup demonstrations in the month of July at the Ashland Library. I've been to horror book mini fest that they run. They're doing, um, you know, a monster romance uh, book fest this weekend. Like they are, they're really kind of, I think, tapping into the, the, the number of people who really just, who love this stuff. And they, seek it out if it's around they don't they don't relegate it to just the fall months they just they're just happy to go if it's around they're going to go seek it out um and i you know i really commend people like the ashland library in particular um, for recognizing that there's a real need and an interest for things like that again haunts and ghost tours lots of people who do these off-season stuff um you know there's a real need and an interest for that it doesn't it doesn't need to be during september and october and of course, they do this every month. So there you go. I know. This, I mean, this is this is like the perfect example, right? You know, 12 months out of the year, we've got something related to horror, Halloween or spooky season. And it's, it's such a great way to stay connected, stay connected to what we love. Yeah, I just want to tell a quick story to, to showcase the meticulous research that you do do. I was in Salem I don't know, this is a few months ago. When was it? May or something. And I get a text from you. You saw that I was in Salem and you're like, hey, can you swing by this Black Craft Haunt, which is was featured, I think, last month on this live stream series. And you're like, I'm trying to find some more info about it. I know part of the year they have actors, part of the year they don't. And you simply asked me to swing by and talk to them, which I did. But like, that's next level, right? Most, I think most people running a, site like this that come that calls itself comprehensive really you know googles the info and they'll just repeat what they put there but you're, you're making phone calls you're reaching out and yeah. you know it's the, the amount of time that goes into all of the stuff you do is honestly next level insane to a point well, thank you and i i do i do want it to be that way i mean i feel like um you know i think a real a real distinction for, and we'll talk, I'm sure, a bit about how we go see events or how the team kind of spreads out and divides and conquers. But, you know, a real key thing for us is visiting as many events as possible firsthand. So um, there's nothing wrong with a press release and press release is sometimes how, you know, rarely, but occasionally is how I will find out about an event for the first time. Um, and that's fine. I mean, it's a great way to get information, but truthfully, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm not going to take things that I read in a press release kind of at face value. If I'm interested in something, I want to go see it for myself. I want to check it out. I want to, you know, I'm curious about these things. I'm really not here to just regurgitate information that is already around. I'm here to provide a little more context, you know, and, and specifically, I guess I would say that I do that more through the social media is really the, the channel that we try to provide a little bit more um, kind of highlighting certain things, um, show, you know, showcasing where we've been, letting people know where we're going to go. And, you know, us taking the time to go to those events is in, in its own way a signal that it's, um, you know, it has, if it's caught our eye, right, with, with everything available to us, with we know where everything is happening, if it's caught our eye and we make the effort to go and be there in person, um, my hope is that it signals to um, people who love Halloween and who are who are following Halloween New England social media that it's probably worth your time too. So that's a good clue. <laughs> you know, we you know, there's no shortage of places that we can go. There's you know, no shortage of demand for where people want us to be. But we have to be very discerning about what is you know, how can we make the most of a weekend trip to Maine? How can we make the most? of visiting Western Connecticut. How can we, you know, we're, we're getting hotel rooms, we're driving, you know, hundreds of miles. We, you know, are hitting sometimes, you know, sometimes three events in a night, sometimes six or seven events in a weekend. And that sometimes is just one person. So occasionally we could might maybe even have like nine or 10 events between the team and a given weekend. We really pack it in and we start planning that in July. So, um, you know, so sometimes the tricky part is those later events we don't always get to include because they just they came around a little too late to squeeze in. But, you know, being kind of boots on the ground and seeing these things for ourselves is the best way that I can, you know, not only kind of take Halloween to people who are following on social media who are really looking for ideas and want to get kind of the true, the true, the true, the true, the true view, I would say. Um, and we're not here to review anything. We really are here to get a sense of what's happening in our community, in the Halloween community, in the haunt community, um, what is happening um, at local farms, what sort of things are they doing to add to their, you know, to add to their season and keep people coming beyond apple season or, you know, at other times of the year. And how can we, you know, or, or businesses like you know, a brewery that does a horror movie night or a horror trivia. You know, these are things that people are, you know, taking the time to create. And I want to make sure that people show up to that. I mean, you know, I want them to be given their due. And um, and if I can, you know, visit as many of these things as possible, like it, to me, that's, my time is really precious uh, during the season. And I do, I do want to kind of be as knowledgeable as possible. And the best way to do that is to do it myself, like be there personally. Absolutely. Folks, I do want to remind you, if any questions for Alexandra, be sure to put them in the Q&A. Now, you've touched on your team a bit already, but let's take a peek at what your team gets up to during the season. I think that, there we go, street team. Spooktacular. So, how many people are on your team? Because you're you're hitting all six states, right? Yeah. So we have um, 
So we have three primary people who are kind of dividing and conquering, four, I would say, if you include myself. So me, Becky, and Lisa, who have been kind of on the team the longest. And then we have Rachel, who was added in last year, and Corey as well, who's so helpful kind of behind the scenes and, um, you know, in so many ways. And and then, of course, like if we expand the team, we've got the website developer who's in Minnesota, you know, the web, the person who designed the website who's in New Hampshire. So, I mean, I really look at everybody as a huge contributor to, you know, making this site come to be. I'm the only one who works on it year round, but, <clears throat> but I mean, they are, you know, we do, we do have to divide and conquer. Everybody has their piece of it. And, you know, to be totally clear, the site would be nothing without this team, this you know, I may do the research in the off season, but this, the thing that makes Halloween New England really sing and make it really, um, has really brought it to the next level is, you know, is the team. It's the people who are, you know, going out there again, dedicating their October, doing very much what I'm doing, which is being boots on the ground, you know, talking to event producers and owners and customers and fans and, you know, not just representing Halloween New England, but learning, learning about the industry, figuring out how we can support them, you know, going to, you know, theatrical performances and, you know, all, all these kinds of things that that really, again, just show that full scope of, of what is Halloween in New England. And um, yeah, they, they really make it all come to, come to be. Was that something that you always have been doing since the beginning was like going out and visiting and making that part of the business or was it really just beginning as a website and then eventually? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a solo operation <laughs> for a long time for most of it. Um, and yes, I mean, I was, you know, creating the website, but of course I really created it because I was trying to find these things for myself. Right. So mm -hmm. like, it would be a shame if I didn't kind of take all this knowledge and go out and take advantage of what it is that I've been sort of planning and preparing for the whole season. Um, but, you know, I had, it, interestingly, I met um, Becky and Lisa while I was visiting a haunted attraction in Rhode Island, 13th World. And I was going there through, through by myself, like I frequently do go to events by myself because again we have to divide and conquer but in this case I was the only one you know to go anywhere and I'm showing up on a Friday night and I go to this haunt by myself and these two you know friends in front were kind of going through ahead of me and they look back and as a lot of people do they look back and they realize like this woman is alone <laughs> at a haunted attraction like who is this crazy person and, you know, they were so kind. They said, do you want to, do you want to join us? It's okay. You can jump on in. And I have to say, you know, they were just like, they were having a blast. They were having such a good time. And that's just really how we met. We met on a haunted trail in Rhode Island and we chatted, you know, I walked through with them and they just were having the time of their lives. And we chatted after we finished the haunt and I got to, you know, kind of ask them a little bit, like I often do when I meet people in line or at different events, you know, how did you, how, how did you come across this event? Why are you here? What do you love about it? You know, I want to really learn, like, who are these fans? Who are the people who take the time or the money to go visit these things? And, you know, we just, I stayed in touch with Becky and Lisa and really they were excited. They didn't know about Halloween New England at that time. And they, um, in some ways, I really built it for people just like them. I mean, they are the kind of people who at that time, they find the site. They see what's in their state. They want to go to everything in that state. They make a plan and they go and they just check them all off because they really dedicate their Halloween season, their October to seeing as much as they can. So that is like my ideal, you know, person who visits the site, because I, you know, if you are a super fan of a particular type of event, my hope is you're, you're always going to be, you know, satisfied at Halloween New England. Um, but, you know, in a lot of ways that they were used, they now use, they were using it kind of like I was using while well, I was creating it. And then before you knew it, we stayed in touch and they just were so enthusiastic about the site. And it just felt like a match made in heaven. I, I cannot believe, you know, it's so serendipitous that I met them because they are incredible ambassadors for the site to, you know, for the past few years. And, you know, the site has really grown significantly, especially I would say, really took a huge leap in maybe 2019 and just really, really, really take a huge, huge leap up in terms of traffic and volume and work and all of that. And, you know, it is, it is such a grind, you know, all that research through the, through the months and to have 
you know, these people who are so passionate about the season and who love, you know, what it is we're trying to do here at Halloween New England. And they just, you know, they just embraced it. And I, I, it's, it's made everything better. It's made everything um, sharper. I love their, you know, their opinion about things. And then to be able to add more people like Corey and Rachel and to have their contributions. I mean, it's, it's really, really priceless. It's, you know, it's a difficult thing to bring people into your business because especially when really people are, you know, we're not all together, right? We're really kind of going independently to these things and to know and have that trust in place that they are, um, you know, understanding why the site is here, who it's for, and they are representing not only Halloween New England well, but really, you know, sh really gathering, gathering what they need to learn to be able to take it back to me. I mean, they are my eyes and ears on the ground. I can't be in Maine when I'm in Connecticut, you know, <laughs> so um, I really trust their opinion and, and their feedback. It really helps me guide decisions I make with the business, things that I highlight, you know, trends that we start to see each year um, kind of come to be. So they're, they're so valuable. You mentioned the going to these things alone, and it just reminded me of a quick story. I went to a, an escape room alone. It was a horror-themed escape room in L.A. or SoCal somewhere. And I was just reviewing it, so I was alone. And they stopped me with, like, another group of people. And we get in this escape room. And, like, one of the first things I see is they printed out a photo of me and gouged my eyes out. And I was like, oh, that's me. And I say this to the group and the group's like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's me. And they're like, oh my God, it is. And immediately they're like, who are you with? I'm like, I'm alone. They're like, you're a plant. Tell us everything. How do we get out of here? I'm like, I have no idea. I'm simply a guest. And they're like, there's no way you're here alone and your face is hanging on the wall with your eyes gouged out. Like they just would not believe me. It was pretty funny. Oh, so they're playing. I mean, I mean, that's part of it, right? Is like, the more you start to know the people in the places that you go or, or they know who you are, there's pranks. There are definitely pranks, you know, <laughs> that come about. I, you know, every year we go to Barrett's Haunted Mansion in Abington, Mass. And, you know, every year there's pranks, <laughs> usually on me. Or you see pranks between different haunted attractions that they're playing. I know Fear Town and and Barrett's Haunted Mansion have kind of like a rivalry going, a friendly rivalry, to be clear. Yeah. And they're always pranking each other. Um, yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> I yeah, don't I definitely... I'm always love being the target of them. I got to be honest, but I'm sometimes the target of them. <laughs> I just love that nobody believed me. I thought that was so funny. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but let's take a peek real quickly at some of the non-scary stuff that becomes available during this time of year. Let's see. So as you can see, there's a lot to experience that isn't scary. I know ghost tours is really popular. They're, they're just everywhere. I'm going to assume every state has some, right? Yeah, I, every state does. Every state yeah. does. And I mean, I would say not a, and you know, the, the, the ghost tours that I have on Halloween New England under the ghost tour guide for each state are usually um, professional tour companies. So it's kind of their year round business where they offer these tours. Um, you know, I do make the distinction with places that offer ghost tours that are a little bit more of a one-off event or, you know, temporary, uh, te just seasonal. Maybe they just do two weekends in October, for example. 
Um, so there are even more ghost tours that you can find on the uh, Halloween events guide for each particular state. You'll find even more, but you'll see the professional tour companies, again, the year round ones under the ghost tour guides. Um, and, you know, it's amazing, actually, the ghost tours. Like there's one of the things I love is you'll see um, historical societies kind of getting into it. So they really are bringing in their, their local history, getting people involved, you know, kind of fundraising, you know, for their for their historical society by doing tours of the cemetery. And it's it's really so neat to see that kind of unexpected people getting involved in 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 a Halloween event in that way. Um, and I just love that. It, it really is like an everybody holiday, every age, every style of, of enjoyment. It really is. A, it's a joyful holiday. Obviously, I like scary things, but that's joyful to me. Um, yeah. And I, I are it's joyful. Really something for everyone. Yeah. Pumpkins are joy. Like, I love a good pumpkin farm. And I know oh, you have wow. lots of those sorts of things. And once again, there's just something for everyone. It's so fantastic. But one of the cool things when you run HalloweenNewEngland.com is you get some pretty unique opportunities. And this is one of them. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about what was going on here? Well, this is my contribution to the Halloween industry. I'm very much a behind the scenes gal, you know, I, I don't ever want to act in a haunted house or anything of the kind. Um, but this was kind of cool that uh, there's a, a horror prop special effects company. They are based currently in um, out West and it's called Ghost Ride Productions. And I had the opportunity to fly out when their, when their workshop was in Seattle at the time. And I kind of combined it into a vacation out to Seattle and I was invited to become a horror prop. So they did what's called a life casting. So you can see kind of in that, they put me in a bald cap and in that picture, they kind of started with my head, they covered my head and they did like a casting of my head. And then you can see once the head came off, then they did my body. And then eventually I became um, what's known as the Alexa prop from Ghost Ride Productions. And there's a variety of different um, iterations of this. So some of them have a head, some of them don't have a head, some of them spurt blood, some of them are frozen, some of them are burned, some of them are, you know, very realistic. And, you know, one of the treats that I have this season, you talk about, you know, that reference of like Easter eggs when you go to, uh, to an event. This is like an Easter egg for me when I go to an event and sometimes I come in and I say, oh, there I am, there I am in the corner or on the floor. And I'll never forget the first time. And I, you know, a lot of people that Ghost Ride Productions is known for their incredibly realistic and very high quality uh, horror props. So it's, uh, you know, it's the kind of stuff that's going to be around for a while. It's really, really well done. And um, the first time I, I remember seeing myself in a, in a haunted attraction was when I went to Barrett's Haunted Mansion one year and I walked up the stairs and there I was sitting at the top of the stairs in the corner um, and, you know, there's so many different varieties, so many different variations of the Alexa prop. I think I was at Barrett's last year and I didn't even know there was a version of my body in like an Easter basket. <laughs> so, so I, I absolutely, it's such a, a kick out of it. Sometimes I'm at Haunted Overload and, you know, I always look for where am I going to spot myself? And it was a real, it was a real honor to, to be able to do this. And it is such a treat to see what Michael Chaley over at, um, at Ghost Ride Productions, which new versions he will come out each year to kind of keep things fresh for the people in the industry. And I and I see it everywhere. In fact, um, my husband was at Hollywood Horror Nights the other night and he sent me um he sent me a picture of he says, Oh look, you're in you're in uh, one of the haunts here. I think it was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre haunt. I was like, oh, From Halloween oh, Horror Nights? Great. I'm in there. So if you go there. <laughs> was, was that in Orlando or Hollywood? In Hollywood. Yep. Oh, wow. I've done it already. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Now I've, I want to go back and see you in it. I'm going to Orlando in a little bit to, to see it there. I hope maybe you're in it there as well. That'd be awesome. Well, I was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre haunt. <laughs> so All that's right. something Very maybe cool. to look at if there's a, a, a similarity. I love it. So I'm going to leave this photo up just because I love it so much. But let's talk <laughs> about this year's trends a little bit. What are you finding this year when it comes to the Halloween season? Oh, trends this year, you know, let's see. I would say um, it's not so much this year as sort of an increase in the trend that I'm seeing. One thing I really love the past uh, 
let's say two or three years is more um, Halloween variations in the arts. So for example, I'm gonna be going to see um, a ballet production of Dracula up in Beverly. So that I'm really looking forward to. Um, as I mentioned, the, um, the Edward Scissorhands ballet on, on screen. I'm gonna be doing, um, there's a company called Escapism Productions in Hartford and they always team up with a local um, historical property and they're doing one called um, the Vexed Visitation, and they kind of bring a theatrical element into it. So it's very immersive theater with kind of a spooky twist to it where people are kind of observing these theatrical scenes as they walk through a historical building. And, you know, I love seeing that kind of stuff. That is really something I'm seeing more and more of. There's a theater company up in um, uh, Lincoln, New Hampshire, it may be Lincoln, New Hampshire or Conway, I can't remember. They're doing something called Ghost Light and they're a theater company, but they do a kind of a Halloween, a, you know, an annual Halloween event where they're bringing a theatrical walkthrough, you know, so they really are taking a theatrical angle to it, but, you know, theming it up for the season. So it's a little bit less of like, we're here to scare, which is maybe how haunted attractions approach it and really coming at it from the arts and seeing how they can, um, you know, interpret, interpret Halloween, essentially. So I, and again, as I mentioned, like the live accompaniment to, you know, silent horror films that I really, I love seeing that. And that does seem to be increasing too. Um, there's also like a candlelight Halloween. Some people may have seen that out through social media. I was able to go to that last year up in Nashua and, or Manchester, New Hampshire. And they, you know, that was really nice too. It was, you know, all, um, you know, it was, horror movie soundtracks that they're playing. So they're playing The Exorcist. They're playing, um, uh, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas. They're, they're playing all these things with a quartet and they, you know, usually hire a local quartet. So they're supporting local artists, even though it's, I think, an international company, but they kind of find local, um, local performers to be able to present, um, you know, a, a musical selection for about an hour. And they do it all with like candlelight all across the stage. And is very interactive. You know, it's not like a very stuffy kind of environment. I really give them a lot of credit for, um, you know, making it very, very accessible for people to go to listen to a string quartet. And, you know, one of one of the things I found so remarkable is, again, the way that they really brought the audience into it. They would kind of introduce each song. They would ask people, you know, do you recognize it? Shout it out if you know it. It was, it was very, again, very interactive, really not that kind of barrier that you might see if you were to go in a typical situation to see a string quartet. Um, and they asked people to raise their hand who's ever been to, you know, to see something like this before. Not, not speaking to um, like Halloween, but speaking to like, have you ever listen to a string quartet, you know? And like the majority of the people had raised their hand that they had never been to something like that. And I thought, that's the kind of stuff I wanna see. You know, you really do, you know, yes, Halloween might be the theme, but you're just giving a hook to get people to enjoy and support the arts. You know, another way is a lot of different, you see my kind of evil dead uh, foam, foam chainsaw there. <laughs> Uh, there was Evil Dead, the musical last year, which was so fantastic. That was really interactive. Um, you see a lot of like horror musicals, Lizzie, about the Lizzie Borden, you know, about Lizzie Borden. That one's going up. There's a theater company up in Maine. So I do see, I think, the arts embracing Halloween and horror a little bit more. I love that. The, the theater company up in Maine, every year they do a different um, a different horror theatrical production. So last year I went up to go see The Exorcist play. Oh, it was just so much fun to see that. Uh, I know they're doing Lizzie this year. It's up in Bangor, Maine, if anyone is up there who wants to go check it out. Um, they've done they've done Evil Dead as well previously. So, you know, I love, that's something I really just love. And I do, I do feel like this season, Halloween New England's team is actually I think prioritize trying to support more of these types of events just to get them on people's radar. Um, we know that they're happening. We've been able to see them. I know my team's going to head out to, to see Sweeney Todd in um, Bridgeport, Connecticut. It, I think they just opened last weekend. So we're going to be going there soon um, to check out that. So, you know, anything we can do to use this platform to be able to support the arts, that's really important for me, but also to, again, People who come to Halloween New England kind of already love and enjoy Halloween. They're looking for something new that didn't that they didn't know about before. And if I can, you know, if I can introduce people to um, 
go to see a ballet for the first time or go see a string quartet or enjoy a musical. Maybe they didn't know that they liked musicals and but something about Sweeney Todd sounded really intriguing and they wanted to go check it out. I mean, that to me is so important and something that you know is very near and dear to my heart. So Perfect. I would think yeah. it's a trend and something I wanna support and hope everybody knows about. And it's more and more every year. Excellent. We only got about five minutes left. So let's answer a few questions real quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Laser wrote in wanting to know, is there a way to search for things geared more towards an older teen or adult on your website? Is there a way to, to separate it by age at all? Not currently in, in, in like a filtering way. Um, one thing you could do, for example, is, um, and it's primarily with a Fractions. So if you were, let's say you were looking for a teen who wanted to go to a haunted house and you're not really sure, like, are they ready for it? What to do? Um, so what I would recommend is go visit um, in your state, let's say it's Massachusetts, you click on a haunted house. There's a whole section on each of those attractions that will say, if I'm aware of what that uh, age range is, like if it's recommended for 10 and up, for example, um, that'll kind of give you a sense. If it's like 14 and up, you know it's probably a little bit more intense. If it says 10 and up, you know, it might be suitable, you know, maybe even for a middle schooler. And so probably a, a more appropriate for someone who's a little bit older. Um, so when you look on things like the attractions, it will, if I can find that information, I will include it there, what that recommended age is. But I'm taking that not from my opinion, I'm taking that from what that attraction says. So, you know, that would be something to think about. Um, and, you know, I would say when something is not suitable, like, uh, let's say content wise, sometimes there's a particular Halloween event and it's, you know, might have some gory content or something like that. It, usually event producers are pretty good about mentioning that, you know, that it's, you know, might have some iffy content, you know, parent parental discretion advised. So that would be just something to look at. But if I can find it, I try to include it. Great. We've only got a few minutes, so let's bang through these ones real quickly. I'm going to plug this one from Susan. Each year, our Salem, New Hampshire Historical Society hosts a soul stroll in our center burying ground. This is the seventh year guiding visitors through the cemetery as they meet our sleeping residents through stories and tales based on local history. The event is free and will be held October 20th from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, where do you have an email address where she can send this info to so that you can possibly put it on right the site? On the homepage. So right on the homepage of Halloween New England, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see submit your event or submit your attraction. In this case, that would be an event. So go ahead and submit your event. Send it in soon because um, you know the more information you include on there, it does take me. I have to at this time in the year, it takes a little longer to get things up just because they come in so fast and furious, and there's just so many you know fingers and so many pies at this time, but it, you know, I try to get batches of events up every week. So go ahead and send it in. Perfect. And a quick answer here. What's your favorite scare element in a haunted trailer house? I mean, I love details. I think details are great, but I got to say, I mean, who doesn't love, who doesn't like, well, I mean, I don't like clowns. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a favorite, but I love um, breakaway doors, you know, when you're kind of walking through and the doors, you know, they look like a wall and they just slam open. I love that element. I do love a good chainsaw chase. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say those. Excellent. Somebody else asked about how to get their thing listed. Once again, go to the website, HalloweenNewEngland.com, go to the homepage and you submit there. And final question, you were talking about the art sort of events. How are those listed on the website? What would they search under to find kind of those more specific events. sorts of things? Those are events. So those are under um, events. Okay. Yeah. So it's not it's not like a category like a like a ghost tour or pumpkin patch. It's the events is kind of the biggest bucket of everything. So yes, I would. I can't say enough about how clever some of these events are. So please go check out you know the the Halloween events in your state or in neighboring states. It really is worth traveling for these things. Um, you know, I do vet things. I mean, I, I can't see everything to vet them, but I, you know, if something looks a little shady or iffy, I'm not going to include it. But there's so many really, really wonderful events to support the arts. Please do go check them out. And I encourage you to try something you wouldn't think you would normally go to, um, particularly with respect to events. Just go try something new. You might be delighted. You might discover something that you did not even know, like kind of brought all the things, you know, that you love about the season or you love about the arts together. I would really encourage you to try something that is so outside your box. It, it's such a treat.
Excellent. I'm going to plug this real fast before I give the mic back to Mina. Tomorrow night, Friday night in Salem, Massachusetts, the I Put a Spell on You Masquerade. For anybody out there who might be a Hocus Pocus fan, we are throwing this epic party with some witchy sisters performing live in a huge DJ dance party and bars and souvenirs and all that fun stuff in a shooting location from Hocus Pocus. So join me at Old Town Hall in Salem, Massachusetts. Visit tinyurl.com slash Salem Party 2024 for tickets and more info. And with that, I'll give it to Mina and Alexander. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeff. Such a treat. Wow. Well, Alexander, you are definitely very detail oriented. <laughs> that came across. Um, well, I thank you both. As always, I put the information about the next session in the chat. And I just wanted to put a plug in for two things for us. We're doing a another uh, special effects makeup session on October, I think, 16th. And, the, and for teens, if you're looking for a teen event in person, we are actually hosting a teen scare trail at the library on October 25th. So keep a lookout on our website for those. Jeff, thank you again. And this is always a pleasure. And I hope you all have a very spooky month until I see you again. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.